My name is Nina Emery. I teach philosophy at Brown University, and today I want to talk to you about chance. What is chance? Chance is objective probability. That is to say, chance is a type of probability that depends only on what the mind-independent world is like. It does not depend at all on what we happen to believe about that world. In order to convince yourself that there is more than one type of probability, consider the following case. Carmen is a chemist. She's performing an experiment in her lab that requires her to mix chlorine and water. She knows that the probability of an explosion occurring when she mixes chlorine and water is basically zero. What she doesn't know is that Sarah has snuck into her lab and put a label that says chlorine on a bottle of potassium. And when potassium is mixed with water, it is very likely to explode. What can we say about what is likely to happen in this experiment? Well, since Carmen doesn't know about the tampering, Carmen's degree of belief, or credence, in there being an explosion is very low. But since the tampering did in fact occur, there's also a clear sense in which an explosion is very likely. The mind-independent facts about what the world is like make it very likely that an explosion will occur. What we have here, then, is a case in which one type of probability, Carmen's degree of belief, or credence, is, and indeed should be, very low. And another type of probability, the objective probability, or chance, is very high. Okay, but what is chance? So chances are probabilities that depend only on what the mind-independent world is like. But what kinds of facts about the mind-independent world determine what the chances are? When we say that the chance of it raining in the Mojave tomorrow is very low, or that the chance of this coin landing heads is one half, what kind of claim are we making about what the world is like? To answer this question is to give a metaphysical analysis of chance. One very natural thing to think is that chances are frequencies. What it means to say that the chance of it raining in the Mojave tomorrow is very low is that it very rarely rains in the Mojave. And what it means to say that the chance of this coin landing heads is one half is that coins like this land heads roughly half the time. A big advantage of this kind of frequency analysis of chance is that it makes it very clear why we take frequencies to provide good evidence with respect to chances. If you want to figure out the chance of it raining in the Mojave, a good strategy is to do some research about how often it rains in the Mojave. But this kind of frequency analysis also faces some serious problems. For one thing, there seem to be non-trivial chances of one-off events. For instance, many people think that the chance of always dreaming winning the Belmont Stakes is very low, but not zero. But always dreaming will only run the Belmont Stakes once, so the frequency with which he wins is either zero or one. Here's another worry. On a frequency analysis, it is impossible for frequency and chances to come apart. But it seems very natural to think that all the fair coins ever flipped could have landed heads on every single toss. That series of results is very unlikely, of course, but it doesn't seem impossible. Finally, notice that we often use chances to explain frequencies. If someone asks you why it never rains in the Mojave, it's natural to answer by pointing out that it's very unlikely to rain in the Mojave. If someone asks why this coin lands heads roughly half the time, It's natural to answer by pointing out that the chance of the coin doing so is one half. But if chances are frequencies, then chances cannot explain frequencies. After all, nothing can explain itself. As a result of these and many other worries, most philosophers have abandoned this sort of straightforward frequency analysis of chance. One option is to shift to a more sophisticated version of frequentism, like hypothetical frequentism or a best systems analysis. Another option is to back away from the frequency analysis of chance entirely. One common alternative analysis of chance is a propensity analysis, according to which this coin has a chance of one half of landing heads, just in case the propensity or tendency of the coin to land heads is one half. This analysis may not face the same worries that the frequency analysis faces, but neither is it especially illuminating, at least not until we hear more about what a propensity or a tendency is. Can we do without chances? So giving a metaphysical analysis of chance is hard. In response, some philosophers try to do without chances altogether. These subjectivists claim that the only probabilistic facts there are in the world are facts about credences, either what they are or what they should be. 
What we say, for instance, when we say that the probability of Carmen causing an explosion is very high, even though her credence is very low, is just something like, if Carmen had been aware that Sarah had tampered with her supplies, her credence in there being an explosion should have been very high. Contemporary physics, however, has made avoiding objective probabilities entirely very difficult. Consider carbon-11, an isotope of carbon that decays into boron. Here's a fact about carbon-11. Roughly half of all carbon-11 atoms decay within any 20-minute period. What explains this fact? The standard scientific answer, the kind of answer that you would find in Carmen's textbooks, for instance, is that roughly half of all carbon-11 atoms decay within any 20-minute period because the probability of each carbon-11 atom decaying within each 20-minute period is one-half. And moreover, this sort of probabilistic explanation seems like the only possible explanation, since according to standard ways of understanding quantum mechanics, there's absolutely no difference, before decay, between atoms of carbon-11 that decay within some specified 20-minute period and those that do not. So if we refuse to endorse the standard scientific answer, we will have to leave a robust pattern in the data that we have collected about the world entirely unexplained. But if we do endorse the standard scientific explanation, if we do say that roughly half of all carbon-11 atoms decay within any 20-minute period, because the probability of any particular carbon-11 atom decaying within such a time period is one-half, we are automatically committed to the existence of chances. No subjective probability no probability determined by what we believe, or even what we should believe, about the world could explain the behavior of carbon-11 atoms. Chances are objective probabilities. Saying any more about what they are is not easy, but they are also quite hard to do without.